Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. I am in a gila right here. This is my Inferno gila. The gila I used to do T4 Firestorms and it's a hybrid fit. The one I've used quite a few times before. And recently I've been just feeling like doing a bit of farming T4 Firestorms. It is a little bit like that in EVE Online. I'm sure you guys can relate. But uh, I, you know, sometimes you just feel like you want to do some activity, then it gets a bit boring. Then sometimes you want to do another activity, then it gets a bit boring. Then sometimes you want to do the old activity you're doing, you know. I've, right now, I've been a little bit in the mood of doing the T4 Firestorms, and I've done quite a few of these sites recently, so I wanted to just take you guys with me. So, I'm going to grab some filaments. There we go, and I even I don't even think I needed to do that because I've got some in my station I'm doing them in. But the T4 Firestorm is really nice. Very cheap, like, filament cost, so good, like, efficiency for how much isk you get. And then also, the Firestorms in the T4s give quite a bit of loot if you compare it to, like, the other types. I mean, it's not, like, that much more, but it is the most, like, profitable uh, T4 to do for the Firestorm. So if you're able to do them well, it's a really good filament to do. Uh, and especially considering how cheap the fit is we're using right here, it is really fun to do this. Now, I am actually using some implants. I'll just like make that uh, clear that I am using some implants. Let's uh, see now, where is the Kuchi, I think. Uh, I am using high-grade Nirvanas, but you don't need them. You don't need high-grade Nirvanas. The reason I'm using high-grade Nirvanas is because like, just, you know, you get a bit of extra training speed, and then also it just becomes a bit more relaxing. Otherwise, I've done this a lot of times without the high-grade Nirvanas. So just an FYI, you can use this without the high-grade Nirvanas. But... I will point this out though. Uh, I have done this, used this fit before and shown you guys, and it might seem very easy how I do the T4 Firestorms, but you do have to have a good idea of what you're doing in the T4 Firestorm if you're not using Nirvanas, because uh, you know you don't want to get neutered out, for example. You don't want to just get to take too much DPS in the face. You need to have a little bit of an idea that's how to you know speed tank, do these kind of things. So if you are not so experienced with the Abyss or don't have so good skills, and you want to use this fit, uh, don't do T4s, do T3s instead. Uh, T3s are still all right, especially in the firestorms, the filaments cost hardly anything, but just keep that in mind. This is for doing T4s, assuming you've got a good knowledge of the abyss and you've got good skills, because I have heard some people saying, that, oh, this fit doesn't work, this fit this doesn't work in this wave, this wave, and I've done those waves multiple times, but I just really think I've got very good skills and I have a, generally speaking, quite a bit of knowledge of like why is the important stuff to kill in the abyss so hopefully you guys watching me doing these kind of things will improve your knowledge as well and make you be able to do the sites a bit quicker so this is actually the same uh, like station on the test server that i have stuff in and it's just i've named it here but we are on tranquility as you can see there are people all over the place but this is the same station it's just a fun little station right here it gives me a lot of memories of all the tests i've done here it's like a i'm quite acquainted with it so we've got some filament here some firestorms we can go and do just undock really we don't even need to have any of the like we do, there's no point really of docking anyway just to check how many filaments there were we can undock here go to the abyssal launch site let's just keep a little bit of iron local is there anyone here who's a bit of a cheeky ganker nah no cheeky gankers nearby there are people who like to gank you i mean i've been ganked in this very ship right here Thankfully, I survived. As you can see here, it's got some kill marks for the scrubby gankers I wrecked who tried to kill me but failed. And that's one good thing about the Nirvana implants as well is that it'll help you have more likelihood of getting through these gankers. And that's also a good reason to do the 1.0 systems if you're in a passive fit. Because, I mean, we're not in a full passive fit, but we are in somewhat of a buffer fit. You can see 20k HP shields. So having the Nirvana implants, you can see here, high grade Nirvana, is good because we'll have a more likelihood of getting through these uh, gankers because we'll have the big buffer to survive them. And in the 1.0 system, they'll get killed a lot quicker. So overall, we're going to have a fun time here and just jump straight into it. Now, something I realized that this fit really, you need to focus a lot on is the neuters. That is one of the types of ships that is quite important to destroy because we've only got one cap battery. Now, you might see that, oh, we only got like three gigajoules to spare or even like less if you don't have a cap capacity implant. But you will see here that like without the shield booster active, we have 20 gigajoules to second. And that's something to remember because we are using a, like a hybrid tank. So it's not like 100% of his tank is in that boost. In fact, a lot of the tank is in those, uh, is in the passive recharge regard, but it's good to use the shield booster as much as you can when you are taking damage to take like full utilization of it because you can sort of think of it as like we've got a buffer and uh, of shield and there's like a certain amount of shield boosts we are going to be able to use 
and just in the, when you've got a full active tank you're probably going to over rep a lot but when we've not got a whole lot of like a uh, rep amount from this booster you can think of it as this boost is providing us extra buffer so if we get the most amount of shield boost from this before we get capped out or get close to getting capped out then we can get them in so it sort of acts as a buffer it's maybe hard to understand but this sort of the amount of shield boost this gives in total is acting as a buffer it's not giving us like a shield booster rate to completely like negate all their dps it's just giving us more shields so that we can survive for a longer amount of time and destroy them because this is t4 not t5 or t6 so we kill them pretty fast so uh it's not like we're going to really have to tank for a long time either that's why i really like this fit for the t4 in particular because you have like the ability of killing them pretty quickly and we've also got the hammerheads as well which is the highest dps drones and 826 dps with the hammerheads right here so it's very powerful very powerful what we've got right here let's see now there we go popped and do a little poppage right there why is our dps a little bit low are we using the right missiles yeah we are using the right missiles okay and i'm just wondering here because the missiles is 826 dps i thought we were to have 900 if we use augmented we have 885 so i thought we would have had a bit more dps than this but apparently we don't hmm I thought we had 900. That's the, just something I'm a bit uh, skeptical about. I think it maybe is that if you have like a basic damage implant and you will get to 900 DPS. But still, 800 is pretty, pretty fat. So we'll be able to kill them quickly. I mean, look, we just slapped those two Ved Max like nothing. And we're in the Firestorm, which buffs their armor. So we are pretty damn strong right here. Take out the Tanglers, actually, because the uh, Ghosting as well. But take out the Tanglers because they're going to make us go slower. And also, if they decide to go for our drones, which some of them have, it will make them e have an easier time applying, but most of all, it'll make them have a harder time returning to us. That can be very deadly, because sometimes they can get webbed, like this guy is getting here. I think he's getting webbed. Maybe at least he's getting scrammed. And he, when I want to recall him, like now, when he's taking structure damage, then it will take a bit longer time, and that's a bit annoying. Okay, return drones. Hardly doing any damage to these guys because of the bad application. Hammerheads have got good DPS, but they've also got pretty bad application. So that's something you have to take into consideration when using these guys. Okay. Drones, please just slap those damage right here. They're pretty annoying. Okay, what's the time? We've just done this now in three minutes. Uh, gone past so far. Come on down. Uh, drones, please hit. There we go. Big hit right there. All right, nice. There we go. And the ghosters are not making our missiles apply as good as well. Let's see now. The tangling guy. Please take out this tangling guy. I'm shooting him. And then we'll go for this guy afterwards. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now stuff is going a bit better. I think they could have been that the Damovic tangled the drones. It made it so that they were like so slow that it took a long time for them to get to the actual target. There we go. Pop come on stop shooting or oh, stop stop shooting <laughs> okay there we go now this is something i like to do is that with the shield booster that's really great is that you can boost the full shields and typical passive fits i've mentioned this before but usually when they go from room to room they will not have the opportunity of getting the max shields but with the booster we will be able to because the boost rate is constant of the shield booster with a passive shield, fully passive shield, the recharge rate up here is hardly anything. It's mo mainly down here that the shield recharge rate is worth something. And this is a pretty slow wave right here. Five minutes is actually pretty slow for my uh, T4s. I like to run them in under 10 minutes. Not always I get that opportunity, but I like to do the sites under 10 minutes. That's why I like to feel like the optimal time is like a good play. If it's under 10 minutes, that, oh yeah, that was a good run there. I felt like we had a bit of trouble applying to those down because we were taking so much drone aggro. Like, look at them getting slapped up. That DPS 1 group is completely annihilated. Five whole minutes. T6 exotic can sometimes be quicker than that. Okay, let's go to the next room right here. Uh, this is just a bunch of sleeper cruisers, super easy. Um, we'll go for the hammerheads because this will be most optimal right here. Have we got what time? Yeah, it's minus 50% thermal as well. It makes it go a little bit slower too. We've got Tachyon Cloud. This is a bit problematic. It's going to worsen the application a lot of both my missiles and drones. It seems like we've got some nice volley in there. You saw from our drones and that warden. Oh, yeah, he went down fast. I don't like it when it bumps me off. This is really frustrating when it bumps me off like this. I go to it, but then it decides to just bump me off. Very annoying. We've got some lots of preservers. They are going to be 
doing a lot of remote reps, but it doesn't seem like it's too much of an issue because of how much DPS we're doing. We can use our booster right here. There we go. Just Triglavian survey data. These last few runs I've been doing, I've been almost only getting Triglavian survey data. It's uh, a bit frustrating. You would like to get those good filaments, but I've not been getting so many filaments recently. Popped. Take out these neuters right here. All these preservers. We can probably take them out soon because they're providing more remote reps, making it going quicker. Ah, and this Tachyon Cloud is making the application go worse as well. We're still getting some application in, not that much. Let's go, keep going this way. You have to hold down Q and double click here to go a fixed distance like I'm doing now. We're going to try to get out of the Tachyon Cloud. It's a bit hard to distinguish where it is, but I think it's over there. Because we've got this orange cloud over here, but it sort of melts into it. So it's hard to see the exact boundaries. It's also going over there a bit as well. You can sort of stay here, I guess. Oh, look, we've got a lot of... Uh, Actually, no, I thought you can see that all these NPCs here, they're not targeting anything. And that will usually make you think that, oh, no, they're targeting my drones. But the thing is, they're preserver guys. They don't usually target anything because they're like remote rep guys. So they are, it's no issue for my drones right here. They're just going to get knocked out pretty quickly. And look at that. Look how quick they're going. Are they all in one group right there? Uh, look at that. They're all in one group right there. That's kind of weird. Let's maybe split up the group a little bit like this. All right. There we go. It seems like we get some good application because now that they've not got anything to remote repair, they're just still. You can see that right there. Oof, that application is beautiful. Beautiful application we've got going on. And we don't need to use our booster either because it's consuming too much cap because of the orange cloud and also just that we're not getting any incoming DPS. And we've got full shields. Okay, great. Let's go to the next room. I've got the... Kaldari Navy Infernos here as some extra ammunition. It's not meant to be used as like an ammunition. I just focus on using the the Fury. But it can be good to have some extra ammunition. Just if worst case you were to somehow run out of this, at least you'd have some backup ammo so you remember to actually switch so you're not completely wasted on your missiles in the next room. Some angels. Angels are very simple. They go down very quickly in the firestorm. Just have to watch out for a bit of drone aggro, really. And the Ixions are were a very weak cruiser, so we're just going to go for these Dreamials over here. And I want to get them to focus a little bit on me first. Because it's just very frustrating how these Dreamials will absolutely nuke our drones. They just absolutely don't show any mercy whatsoever. Come on, please, Dreamials. Die, there we go. We just want to take out these Dreamials. That's all that we really only want to do. Just take out the Dreamials. Then the drones will hopefully be safe. Because the Hammerheads are very flimsy drones. They've got really good DPS, but pretty much in every th other aspect, they suck hard. They've got crap armor. They've got a bigger structure, but crap armor, overall hit points, shield is absolutely non-existent. They're very slow, very bad application. They've got an okay range, but they're otherwise, just for the amount of DPS they have, that sort of overrides everything. That it makes everything else just really bad. I can sort of understand. I mean, if you want to have the highest DPS drone, you have to sacrifice a few other aspects as well. But you can see here, it goes pretty quickly. I mean, when we get some of these guys who are webbing off the grid, it makes the drones a little bit easier at time to also hit because of them less, getting less webbed so that they can sort of like actually get close to the ships and not be webbed away so that the NPCs can kite them. So they go pretty quickly. And also, the, I find the angels are not that hard to hit. I think they're using MWDs and if they're not using them then they go pretty slow. They're pretty easy to hit is what I'm trying to get out because I feel like our drones get some good hits in. Sword Spine. Yeah, look at that time. Just over 10 minutes. T4 Firestorms really go pretty quickly. Right? It's a it's a very relaxing experience compared to the T6s. It's a long time since I did T5. I mainly do T6 and T4 nowadays because I find that the T4 Firestorms just a really relaxing break, you could say, from the T6s. You don't have to really think much. It's, you do have to think, but it's not as stressful as the T6s. It's a good way to get some nice isk. I mean, you can earn about 150 million isk an hour, I would say, sometimes more, depending on the loot. Because you can sometimes get these really good filament drops. And you can get, I've gotten like 100 million from one of these sites sometimes, if you're good, lucky on the filament drops. I think I even have a video on it where I got 100 million from one of these T4 Firestorms. You can look at my past videos I've uploaded. Return drones, please. Return drones. There we go. 
It's always important when you exit these, I mentioned this before, but have full shields. In the event you get ganked, it will be nice that you'll really thank yourself for having full shields. Because I once thought that uh, maybe I'll go without full shields, but then I decided to go with full shields and would you know I was ganked. So if we do get ganked, it's the case of just overloading mid rack and pulling range. That's all it is. Anything here? Nope. <laughs> My heart can rest a little bit. But there we go. Did some quick T4 Firestorm Abyss. How much loot was it? 16 million. Not that great. Really, the loot has not been that great for me recently these last couple of days. Because I have been doing these last couple of days a bit of uh, T4 Firestorms. And I've not been getting that much loot. You can get definitely more. And it really depends a lot on those filament drops. Because those filament drops really give you those fat ticks. Like they can, you get Chaotic Electric or Chaotic Exotic. It's just that filament in, in itself is worth 20 million. So you will get like almost double the amount as this. I mean, this is just the minimal loot. I mean, this is really bad filament right here. And this is just minimal loot otherwise. You can obviously go for like some of the extraction nodes as well. We went just for the buy adaptive, like minimal looting as well. So we could have also done that to get some more as well. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. T4 Firestorm farming in the hybrid gila. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted.